today I am doing my November wrap up. I woke up this morning and I was just like, I haven't even talked about the books that I read in November. How could I forget? Like, huh, that is like the best video of the year for me to make at least because I love talking about books. So it's like a win-win situation, you know. I read nine books actually in November, but some of them I've been reading for several months now and then I kind of I ended it today. So like I read so many good books in November, like it's insane. The first book that I read was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This has been so hyped up by booktube, but I'm really glad I read it. I read this together with my book club, which was really, really fun. This book is about the 16 year old girl called Star and she witnesses her best friend getting shot by the police and it wasn't like justified if you know what I mean and she lives in this black neighborhood but she also goes to this kind of white school and so she has to change between being this like the ghetto her and like the white her if you want to say it that way and it's kind of her struggle between these two worlds where she loves both of them but she doesn't know how to like fit it together and it's basically about this whole cause of her best friend being sh shot and everything that happens after that and that's what this book is about. I enjoyed this book. I loved the characters. I thought the characters were very vividly described and also their actions. They were always like consistent in the way that they were. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Like I seem like literally everyone else did. Like it was very YA and I feel like I don't want to say I'm over YA cuz like I'm only 18, but I feel like mentally I'm a little bit past like this way of speaking, but I really did enjoy it. There were some things that I felt like the black kids in this book were being very racist towards the white people. And I don't mean like, because you know racism is both ways, like it is a cause and effect kind of, like it's a cycle. You know, calling someone white racist is essentially racist, assuming just because they are white. And that was a lot of stuff happening like that in this book, and once a white person like offends someone black, it's like, it's because they're black, you know? And I thought the author dealt with it a very, in a very good way, and it's an own voices story, so like I have to trust the author that they like told the story 100% truthfully, and I'm glad I read it, it gave me some insight but I think there was a lot more that could have been said with this story. Next, I read Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and boy, whoa, this good book was so incredibly good. Like, I didn't, I haven't watched the sixth movie a lot because I, like, the fact that Dumbledore dies at the end, by the way, spoiler, like, if you don't already know, it's not really a spoiler. It's just, it breaks me so much that I've like avoided that point like I always skip to the seventh movie if I'm watching the movies because I'm like I don't want to see it again oh but the book was just so good like god damn like I love Harry Potter but every time I read the books I'm just like whew this is this is too much for me like they're just so fucking amazing I'm so happy I read this book and Something I really, really love about this book is actually, like, the romance. I know I'm being, like, but romance in Harry Potter in the books are actually very well portrayed. I don't know why this is. I like, like, the relationship between Harry and Ginny in the movies. It's so bad. Like, I hate the movie character Ginny. She's, like, so badly done. She's, like, the only character that's nothing like the book. In the book, she's such a good character. She's so funny. She's so confident. She's so, like, empowered, and I just love Jeannie so much in this book, and I really, really love seeing that. Next, I read Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I have read all of John Green's book before, so of course I had to read the new release. The description of this book basically says that it's about this girl, Aza, 16-year-old Aza, and her best friend trying to find this billionaire called Russell Prickett and she happens to know Russell Prickett's son because her father's gone missing and she and her best friend they kind of set out on like a little detective work and try to find their father because it's like a lot of money that they do get if they find this billionaire and he's been in some like legal business whatever but that's really not what the story is about like that's the plot line what the story is about it's about like Asa's OCD and it is like very severe and I like the way that this book was written. I mean 
John Green has also struggled with OCD, so it is a voice story. And there was a lot of things that I could relate on so much. Like, I don't have OCD or anything, but she has this, wo this wound on her, like, finger that she constantly, like, when she thinks about changing the wound or what if it's infected, like, she keeps, like, she has to change, like, change the bandage or she has to check on it. And I can relate to this so much like the way like if you think about something you can obsess over it and like you have to do it and I really liked how that was portrayed I liked the way her thoughts worked she's a very intelligent girl like the way she thinks about uh, microorganisms and like what is happening inside of her own body and everything I thought it was a good book I don't know if it was a five-star book but I really did enjoy it next I read Warcross by Marie Lu I have not read her other trilogy i think it's called legend the first one i'm not sure so i haven't read other the other marie lou books so this was my first one this is also a new release i love this book like full on i loved it and i can't really explain why it's just like the writing and the plot and everything just worked so well together this is a sci-fi where it is like the regular world but there's also this game invented called warcross and they put on these glasses uh, that you can buy and then you could like see into like on a beach and everything and with these glasses there's this game created called Warcross where basically you can build teams and you can um, buy different like fidgets and it's like you're going into the game and like you're you're playing it in like a way and it's very very famous and Amika Chen she is very good but she doesn't have time to play because she is very very poor her mom left her and the dad is dead Amika Chen is a hacker so that's why like she has a way with this game that is very unique and she's also a bounty hunter which means that she hunt, like hunts people that the police kind of set up a profit for and that's the way she makes money and then one day she accidentally finds a glitch in a the world championship of a Warcross and she enters the game and suddenly she, she's in a lot of trouble and the creator of Warcross wants her to do a secret job for her. So there's a lot of like plot going on in the beginning to get her to this point. I just enjoyed this book so much. I don't think I've re like read about something like a game, like a virtual game before, even though it's like a really world famous concept to have. And I really, really enjoyed it. I have to say, like, there's this villain called Ciro, and I knew who it was from, like, the beginning. Like, it was not a surprise, but it was a very good book. Then I read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. She read Everything I Never Told You, and I really love that book. This book, it is... It's an adult book. It's very adult. It's about this mother and child who moves into the city of Shaker Heights in Cleveland. And Shaker Heights is this, like, city where everything is perfect. Like, if your grass is above a certain um, height, then you either, like, you get a notice for having to mow your lawn or otherwise, like, the police is gonna, you know, send you a bill and mow your lawn for you because everything has to be like this. And there's only certain colors you can color your house and, you know, like... It's like that, and this story is about the mother and the child who moves into the city and they rent a house from this family called the Richardsons. And they have another house and the Richardson children kind of become friends with this child of the mother and those who moved into the town. I'm very bad at explaining this. And the mother, she's very artistic, she's a photographer, and they're trying to get by and they always move from like city to city. And so it's really about like relationships, but it is so much more. In the beginning, you figure out that the Richardson house has been burned up and you don't really know why or why. And then you get like the full story of how it came to burning their house. And it's just so goddamn good. Like I don't like drama, like books. I don't even like really like contemporary books, but this book is so good. Like it is so clever. The way it's written is absolutely amazing. Like. I just like this is definitely a five star book. I absolutely loved it. I love the background story that you gave behind each character, and then there's a, um, a theme throughout the whole book, which is like motherhood, because you get to follow these different mothers, and there's a parallel story of this adoption going on, and the mother wanting her child back, and this thing. So it's a lot of different ways of motherhood being portrayed throughout the book and it's just so well done. It's also about these teens and you also get to follow like people through all ages which I just also really love and the city and the perfection and 
just there's so many themes and I think everyone should read this book because it was so good. As some of you might know, I have started my own online clothing store and so with that I read this book which is how to set up and run a fashion label and it was very very insightful. It takes you through like the whole process of, you know, collections and everything that has to do with business management and how to reach out. Like it's just everything you need to know when it comes to it comes to fashion and it also has loads of case studies so you can show how different uh, people like set up their fashion labels and there's so many ways to do it. If you follow this, you're almost going to be certain to succeed. And I thought it was really really good and very helpful. After that, I read both of these. This is Three Dark Crowns and the sequel One Dark Throne, both by Kendra Blake. I think there might be more in the series because the ending was kind of like, whoa, what's going to happen next? This is about this island where there is a queen who rules and when the queen has three daughters, they all are blessed with three different types of gifts. There's the poisoners, the naturalist, and the elementalist, and these chill like... The queen's children have one gift each and then they're all separated when they're six year old in this different different parts of this island and then when they become 16 they have to fight and kill each other to get the throne and all of these different like people like the poisonous elementarist and naturalist they all want their queen or like their power on the throne and the poisoners have been ruling for a really long time and what's kind of interesting about these is this island like exists outside of our world like our world is still like normal you know and then this is the island that kind of very few know about it is a very very dark fantasy but I really enjoyed it it is also very very slow burning like in the first book like they haven't even it's everything that happens before like the year that they're gonna kill each other so it's kind of just like drama this and like learning the characters there are so many characters in these books like I had to keep a list to keep track of them but then maybe that's just me uh, but all in all I really enjoyed these books I thought they were very good and I'm definitely going to continue with the series lastly I read uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows you guys oh uh, so good like what can I say I cried like actually so much throughout this book like I know this is a middle grade but god damn I cried like I was like I'm not gonna cry when Dobby dies this time but there I was bawling my eyes out like whew, emotional wreck like I was reading like the last chapter in this when we were watching the uh, the cursed child in the theater and it was just so hard for me but I'm so glad I read these books before I watched the cursed child because it made it like I think it elevated my experience so much and I'm really really hap happy I did this kind of Harry Potter rereads the last couple of months and I absolutely loved everything about all of these books and this one as well that is everything for the books I read in November I know it's a lot I have already read so many good books for December, so look forward to knowing about that. If you want to, please, please comment below what books you read in November or what books you're currently reading or a recent read that you just think is amazing and have to tell me about because I'd love to hear. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys all have a brilliant day and a brilliant reading month. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye!